Okay, so um, last class we, we just worked with this Docker file here. Let me just start, start, can't really record it. Let me just try to go from last class. So this was just um, a test. This was just a test. So now um, there are some, there are some um, admins here, who's this? Okay, great. All right, so um, we have about five very important um, commands that you should know where you're doing with Docker file. The first one is from. The first one is the from. Okay, so from from uh, from is for specifying. Okay, when you're uh, when you're working with Docker file, Docker file actually works in layer. It, just like you are building your house, you are building your house from the foundation. There is always a reference point. Okay, yeah. Let me call it a reference point for Docker file to work. You must always have a reference point, and I mean a reference a, a reference point that's talking about where to start from. Okay, so that's what you use this from to do. So this from is more or less like the foundation. You must always start with it. The foundation can be as simple as a low word. It must just reference any image. So the kind of image you are using or the kind of image you want to use depends on what you are looking for. Definitely, you know, when you are when you are using just um a low word Docker image, there is you know, like there are a lot of um functionalities that you'll not be able to get. On, on like where you are working with Ubuntu. So when you are using Ubuntu as your reference point, then you should you definitely know like uh, with Ubuntu, the package manager you can use with Ubuntu is apps. When you're working with CentOS, you know the package manager you can use is um, Yom, you know? So when you're working with Python, I use a Python 2, I use a Python 3, you can use Python 2 as your reference point. That is your application, maybe you'll be needing Python 2. Definitely you can use Python 2. So, what you need is what determines what you'll be using as your reference points. So it can be anything. And mind you, if you are using CentOS, um, if you're using CentOS, probably maybe talking about efficiency, you're trying to improve the efficiency of your Docker image. But maybe you just want to write, it's, the application is just maybe to run a few scripts and then, or to do a migration, and then you're now using um, an, a, 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 an OS. Okay, as your reference point, then you know, like you are not maximizing your Docker image enough. I, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So now, uh, one thing you should take notice in programming, yeah, in, in, in programming, you, you talk about efficiency a lot of time. So the same thing to where you're trying to, even it's not in programming, even in, uh, in, 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 in life as a whole, you, you talk about efficiency, a lot where you are managing your money, you want to get the best value for your money. Where you have the land, you, you are trying to um, optimize the use of the land. No matter what you have, you are just trying to optimize your resources. The same thing as your Docker image. And mind you, um, there are some scenarios where you'll be having your Docker up. From last class, I defined Docker up. Docker up is a registry where you actually keep all this image. Okay, so let's assume you have um, a self-hosted Docker or, and you have a storage space. Maybe you have 10 gig storage space. Definitely, um, you don't want to be installing like one gig, one gig of Docker image every time. So you can just try and just minimize like a low world. Maybe a low world is just like it's 2 MB, you know, uh, busy box, maybe around 40 something MB, you know. So now it just depends on what you are trying to achieve. Just try to, to optimize. So the first thing you want to talk about is from. So from is your reference starting points. Um, then we, we also have maintainer. Maintainer is just like a label, like you're just trying to label with okay, who, who owns this, you know, wherever you put your name, that's maintainer. Um, how is maintainer even spelled? Maintain, okay. I think this should be the maintainer, okay. Um, then besides that, you, you have run. So what do you use your run for? So run is just for issuing commands. The, the same command you will run on your um, terminal or your command line, okay? Like you can run your ls, you can run your apt install, you can run your make directory, you can run your cd dash chain directory. So that is what you use. So you just put run, then the command you want to run, maybe um, apt, apt get install. 
Okay, so that's what your your run is. So every command you want to do, you can you can just use your run. And then um, maybe another thing you might want to take note of is if you want to if you want to join two commands together, it's as simple as just using this double and percent. So you can do apt install, um, apt install maybe a package, um, apt install a package, then and percent that's running two commands on a single line. And then you can also do touch, touch, maybe a file. So um, yeah, in case you are just trying to, to, to minimize number of lines, so you can also do that. Um, then we, we, we also have we also have CMD. So um, with CMD, what does CMD actually does? Uh, with CMD, you, you, you specify the command. You specify the command that you want to run inside the container. You know, I told you the first process is image. The, 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 the running instance of an image is what we call container. So the first thing you do is you build the image. Okay, which is what you can push to your Docker or then once you are running the image, that is what we 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 we, uh, we call the container. So the command that you want that you want running at the instance of running your image inside the container, the command that you want to run inside a container is what you specify with this CMD. Okay. Hello. Okay. It wasn't long. Uh, okay, all right, all right, thank you. So um, we have CMD. Yeah, um, I think I'll, I'll also meet one. So we have copy. Yeah, sorry, I'll lose some this. We have this copy command. So it's copy. Copy uh, is um, copy is a command that you actually use in copying a file from your host machine. And you know when we are talking about host machine, we are talking about your instance here. This is your instance, which is your um which is the EC2 instance okay so um then you are copying file from that your EC2 instance into the docker image you know we told you like with docker image you are isolating everything that is like you're putting everything your application will be needing you are putting it inside a C your um like you your um with docker okay when you're talking about docker you're saying docker is it does not, it's, in, it's independent, okay? Everything is going to be needed to work. It's packaged together. So now, both the files, the configurations, you don't want to do anything manually. Like take, for instance, now you have a file maybe on your host machine and you want to copy into your Docker image, you know, all those kind of things, all those kind of uh, processes, you can use your, your copy. The same way you can also use um you can also use the hat you can also use hat but recently there's um, this um, security benchmark CIS um, I think uh, the use of hat they said has some vulnerabilities is it hard or copy so about uh, I think it's the hat let me check. But then both, uh, both copy and add, they are, they are almost perform the same functional, functionality. You can use to copy a file from your EC2 instance to your image, okay? So now um, with, with the repository we we're working with from the first class, let's continue with that. And just build an image from there. So this was the repository we were working with, Docker curriculum. This one was just a uh, for explanation last last week, so you can see. Is anyone having any question from this? This is just like uh, what I've just explained now. From that is the base image. So I decided to use an image that I already have in my Docker. Or it can be anything. I can decide to use hello, uh, hello world image. I can decide to use busy box that we used in the first class. Then you have your work DIR. So with your work DIR, it's just to specify, this is my default working directory. Just like when I logged in now, it took me directly to see me 
that's what the work dir is for so the default working directory then anything you copy now or any any tax you do that that's going to be your pwd you know your 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 pwd that's present working directory okay so anything you do is going to be inside that directory so you have your now we are now copying a file we are copying text.cst into the image this dot this dot is this dot this dot is just a reference point this dot is just a reference point to me it presents my present location that's what dot is it's just for defining a relative path remember we have absolute parts and relative parts so the dot is just a relative part like okay my present location so he says copy this file from my host machine that is in this test.cst is still a still relative part as well remember if it's absolute with absolute starts to start with forward slash but without forward slash it actually means um relative part okay so it's copying this file from the present working directory into the present working directory of the image using these dots the same thing as this is copying s2 into um tnp then this is just to demo how a command is being run inside um, a docker image so with that being established let's let's go to the, the rep we are working with so we are working with this docker curriculum if i continue do you have any question please Hello. Please go ahead. You can go ahead. All right. Thank you. So um, this is what we are working with. Now, um, I think basically this is the hub we want to deploy. There are different apps here inside this repository. So we have this static, this static site. You remember where we got the repository from from the last class? This is the repository we got it from GitHub from this guy so uh we cloned we cloned this repository the first class um I think we deployed this static this static file so for this class we should we should deploy this flask so now I want to deploy this flask using um docker file now so let's open the docker file so I can let me explain the docker file so now, um, hold on. Okay, this is the um, location of the Docker file. So this is going to be our reference starting point, and then this is the Docker file by its side. Let me just copy this and maybe put it inside the notepad. File and right so let me just paste this so let me use that in explaining in reference to what we have here so now uh for the first line it said from i told you from is just a reference starting point there must always be a reference starting point now because flask is actually a python that's why it's a python app that's why they are using python 3.6 as reference points okay so it's, it's what you're working with. Now, uh, after that, the, 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 the default directory was actually stated here. Sorry about this. This is actually a comment. So what this hash, hash sign actually means is ignore, um, just take this, don't run. Um, this, is just, this is just a comment, okay? That's what this hash is. So don't, um, this, is, this is just a comment, you know, just just ignore everything you see on that on that particular line so you can see that's why it doesn't even color this part because it can easily read like okay this is just a comment it's not doing anything so uh, anywhere it sees this add sign at the beginning of a line it's going to avoid it it's going to ignore it so that's what this hash sign is about so now um So this is the first line. So the next line is work work DIR. You see here, these are not family money time. Okay. All right. So now the, the the default working directory is USR 
SRC app. Okay, so the default working directory is going to be this app. Okay, now oh, this. I'm, I'm trying to have me some money on my own money gain. Okay, I think the person's network is not that good. All right, so um, now the next line now is copy. Copy everything from my present working directory. So see this now, it says the copy dots into dots. You know, after copy, with copy, um, let me explain. So when you are using copy, you have source, then destination. So that is what it's expecting. It's expecting two arguments when you're running, when you're running uh, a copy command. The first one is source and the, 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 the next argument is destination, okay? So with this now, this dot is actually the source. So the source is my present location, okay? So copy everything in my present location and paste it into the image. That is this default app, which is the press, which is the working DIR, okay? So copy this into this, okay? So now, and again, you can also do something, you know, after copying this, after copying this, um, after running this copy, you can also, we can still do something itself. You can still do run CD, maybe into TMP, CD into TMP, and then do copy dot dot. Now, what this is going to do, I'm just trying to um, explain some things here. What this is going to do is, Okay, now it has copied all the file from the present working directory into the default working directory, which is this, right? But mind you, everything is working in layer. Now, the next layer we actually built is CD into this, into this part, TMP. So the moment you run CD into this TMP, your work DIR has been switched from year to year. So if I run this command now, it's not going to paste it here, it's going to paste it into the TMP. Okay, so um, that's that. Then after that, uh, the next the next one is run dependencies. So a, a, this is this is actually the work of a programmer anyway. So as a as a Python programmer, this file is where you state all the dependencies. Let's look at it. Let's look at this um, dependency. So here yeah, it's only telling you you know it's it's a Flask app. So it's telling you. The, the, the dependency here is Flask. So it's, it's going to use pip to install this dependency, Flask. Okay, so um, if, if, if you're running, if you're running um, React now, maybe React Angular, I think those ones, they actually make use of uh, package or JSON. You know, so I, those are the two I know. I, I, I know, I know for Python, Java, uh, JavaScript actually is package JSON. Python actually use requirement.txt. So um, now, so now, if you want to install dependencies in Python, the normal command is pip install. This is just um, this is just an option here. Okay, this is just an option here. The year is just okay. Let me go deep into this. And R is actually recursively. So this R is, is recursive in case you have more than one dependencies. But the normal command for running for installing dependencies is in Python is pip install um recursive requirement.txt. So that's why you have this here. Okay. And then the application is running on port 5000. So if an application is running on port 5000, you have to expose that application port, just like you're opening your security group in your EC2 instance, okay? So that's what this is all about, expose port 5000. And this last command is, okay, once the container is running, I want you to run this. All right? So that's, that's, that's that's the brief explanation of of um, Docker file. And just like I told you, anything you want to install, um, let let us assume you want to work with Node.js app. Just, just say Docker file for Node.js, Docker file for Flask, Docker file for Django. You see them. So it's just a few tweaks you just do, and boom, you're up and running. So Dockerizing the Python app.
Yeah, it's, it's recording. Support my talent. I don't know if it's recording. Are you, can you hear me? Sorry, my, my entire just keep messing me up today. I, I don't know why. Sorry about that. <clears throat> can you hear me now? Yes, we can. All right. Thank you. So um, now, um, uh, I was trying to explain, like, any, she may, may go on resign, okay? She, you have, yes, you have, um, Yes, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the lecture. Thank you so much. So I have a question. Um, I already talked about copying some code. How much of how much of coding should 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 we know? Because we're talking about talking about Docker Flags, Docker Python, and you said you make some tweaks. So how much of coding? Because I'm seeing coding is coming on gradually. How much how, how much of coding are we supposed to to prepare for? That's my question. No, um, that's what I'm explaining to you right now. You, you maybe um, the moment you actually saw all this now, you were actually scared. Majorly right now, what 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 used to happen is developers will always provide you this. Most companies, developers will always provide you this. Okay, so uh, if in case your developer did not really provide you this, most of the times. All these things, they are always the same. Now, for Docker file now, all you just needed to know is I've defined it to you. Most of the things, you, majority of what you need to know, 80% of it is this. Just have a good understanding of this. Now, um, probably you now saw this command now. Uh, pip install, pip install, pip install requirement.txt. Okay, now, Every um, most of the time, like when you're working with a, 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 a web app, okay, every framework always have their own web servers. So this um, oh okay, this is for web server, okay. Now uh, we also have dependencies, okay. So every app you're working with always have um, or every stack you're working with have a way of de defining its dependency, okay. Now for Python, let's let's assume. Your company now, you're working with Python. It's as simple as just, okay, how do you install Python dependencies? Okay, which is just browse it, installing Python dependency. And in fact, if you don't want to stress yourself, ask your developer, I'm not used to Python. How do I run? How do I install Python dependencies? They will tell you, install Python dependencies. Um, how, do, how do I see? Okay, you see, pip install. So you see, pip install, which is what which is what we are just running here. So every Python is this for for um for Node apps. I I, I actually don't know it offhand, but I think maybe um npm install npm install the package name. Okay, or npm install package.json, I think. So it's just it's just like that, uh, which is what you are just running here. You are just running npm install. You are just running pip install because it's the Python. Okay. So now don't get scared of how much coding. Answer your question about okay. Answer your question about how much coding. How much coding? I would say just know your bash script and what is bash script. Bash script is always been green. Even including the Docker build, Docker run is still part of the bash script because you are issuing it on your terminal. So once you are used to your terminal, you are 70% um, mm -hmm. good with bash scripting, just with a few tweaking, okay? Uh, maybe if you want to run bash scripts, the first line or the first line, there's a definition you have to make, they call it shebang. They call it shebang, you know, um, shebang. 
So this is a shoe bank. Okay, so you just have to insert this, and then um, the, the the terminal you want to make use of, which is BIM. So just just define SheBank, and then keep writing your your normal um, Linux command, and that's what they call bash scripts. Then probably if you now want to learn some other things, you just talk about your recursive um, how to loop. You, you talk about um, you know uh, that conditions, right? You talk about arguments, okay? How do you define variables? Maybe how, how, how you can define variables. Those are just maybe the thirty percent, but seventy percent. No, Google is your friend. Just just browse it. Okay, how can I do this? You see it there. Myself, I don't know it offhand. If I want to run the batch script now, all I just have to be good to Google. Just read read for maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Then I already have an understanding why because I already have the previous experience. But if you are a new person, by the time you spend like thirty one hour. You already done with what you want to do, and then before you know, you're up and running. So I don't think it's anything to be scared. To be scared of, <clears throat> okay. Well, we start session. Okay, so um, Doctor Flask. Now, so now let's let's run. Let's build this Docker image now. So we are going to build the Docker image now. So to build the Docker image, if you remember the command, that's Docker. I'm sorry, we want to build the Docker image. So that's Docker. Um, Docker build. Docker build, I think, see, uh, then the name of the Docker image that you want to build, okay? So, um, F class, we we'll call it F class, we we'll call it F class. Then, now, the, the, let me, let me write in so I should be on the same line. Yeah. Docker, Docker build. Docker build. And now let's build the image. Docker build. Docker build. Um, then I think I think C. Then the name of the image, let's call it dev class. Dev class. And then um, now the, 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 the last parameter that has been expected is the location of the Docker file, which is our present working directory. Okay. You have to, to tell it that in our present working directory, just specify dot. So now let's build the image. Now send the building context your step from is is really the first line because python is not existing beforehand so it has to pull python image to um our local machine so that's what it's doing now I hope I'm making sense. Yes, I can't see your screen. Oh, I'm sharing my screen already. No, I, I can see your screen. All right. I guess I think it has to be with that person as well. Yes. But I hope I'm making sense. Yes, you are making sense. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. So because it's taking time because it's the first time pulling this 
Python. After the first step, um, the other steps will take time. This is step one of six. So you still go to step six of six. But those ones there, they should be fast. See us everywhere, come silent. Oh. Because you are listening, you are trying to listen to the team pool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sabol, I received the notification from AWSO. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just seeing your message now. Yeah, apply. But well, I think there are sometimes some conditions. I saw, I saw it, but do, do, do you really need it anyway? I'm, I'm not sure, but just try and read the terms and conditions very well. Okay, okay, thank you. To me, I was even thinking, I, I was even thinking it's a voucher, maybe a voucher. I, I received it too, but I think it's was it a voucher, maybe. Maybe I think it's a it's, it's a voucher for certification. I think just try and read oh. it and see what it's applied. Okay. Like. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <sighs> this thing is so slow, man. I have no idea why. You said, so somebody said they can't unmute themselves. You can, of course. <laughs> Um, I, I even Sorry. Okay. Okay. okay, I thought uh, my lost connection. Sorry, I don't know that the class is still on. How to navigate it, sorry. Um, 
I I I just wanted to tell like I actually got a small side gig anyway. I just I just I just did it because. I just did it for doing it, not not for the money. I think I'm I'm just at that stage. Like I, I don't really want to be driven by money, but anyway. But then, um, somebody reached out to me and said they needed me to come and do DevOps for them. Uh, though the moment I started hearing the person telling me only oh, three times, I knew the person wasn't going to pay anyway. But um, I just feel it's not about the money for me. I I stopped I stopped looking at the money. You know, probably could still do better things in the future, not, not about now. So if the mess was just explaining to me, I said, no problem. But I attended the meeting and they are trying to build an app, which is going to be on WordPress. So, um, and it's going to be on uh, EC2 instance. So they just wanted me to have them set up all those instance, something like that, you know. It's not going to be anything really serious. It's not going to be anything serious. It's, it's something that I, I feel within a day two days I can really um, completely set up the whole thing. And well, if 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 anybody might be interested anyway, if I want to do it by the time I start, I can just call you, can just do it together and go through it. So I'm just I'm just saying this so um, you can understand DevOps. DevOps is is really cool. It's really cool. It's simple. You you have you have enough time for yourself and. Guess how much? How much, sir? When the person actually said it, when the person just said it, you know, but just, oh, we don't have money, we don't. When, if you want to hire a DevOps, if you want to hire a DevOps, I know what DevOps is actually saying in the markets. I know what DevOps is saying in the markets. But the person was like begging me this, begging me that. I was like, he told me, he said 164. I said, not bad. The man was expecting me to say, no, it's too small, but said 164, not bad. Why did I say it's not bad? I'm not, I'm not actually charging it because, because I'm a DevOps engineer. I'm actually charging it because it's a person I've known very well. It's a person I've known you know, for some time. Um, I feel I do a lot of things in a day. I, I, can, I can waste a whole day. So it's not a bad one. Um, it's an, an, another opportunity for me to just express. It's not going to affect my work. It's not going to affect anything. But I don't even try to negotiate better. Like, just let's just do it. And trust me, this thing I'm saying, it's nothing serious. It's it's a thing I can finish in less than a day. It's a thing. It's a thing like it's a thing like anybody can do it by the time we are done. Because I'm not even going to be using Kubernetes. I'm not going to be using Kubernetes. The 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 the, the worst I'm going to do is spin up an EC2 instance set up a database of which I know there's a lot of things, a lot of resources I could just uh, get back to maybe on WordPress to set up a database. So set up my database, set up a, a CICD pipeline, that same machine I'm going to be using to get Jenkins, and then integrate it with GitHub, which is the SCM they are going to be using. At the end of this class, everybody should be able to do this. So you can just use a collect a side gig and, and soft. Yeah, that that's lovely. Sorry. That's lovely. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Is it is it a regular price or one time price? It's not a regular price. You oh. this person literally got to me because I'm sure maybe it's not getting any DevOps engineer doing these things. That price is actually you know I I, I I've not done anything like that. You know, side gig. I I actually take full time role and. To me, I think it's not a bad. It's, it's not a bad idea. Even in, in Nigeria, in Nigeria, then how much? How much was FCNB paying? FCNB was paying was paying was paying around two fifty. Was paying around two fifty. Uh, maybe test switch paying around three three uh, three fifty. Then um, I actually got one too. Was it parallel score then? That one was paying around five hundred. So if if at all I'm just doing a side gig of one something from Nigeria, it's not a bad one. So um, how should we be expecting the WordPress stuff that you said not quite long? All right, hold on, hold on, please. So um, take, take note of this. I'm, I'm always scared of this red. I don't like red. Yeah, it's, it's not a good thing, but then let's just try to read what's, what's complaining here. Warning, 
this is just a warning. At times it could it could just crash, you know, but then it's it's it went on, you know, so it's still fine. But let's just show the warning. Running running pip as root user can result in broken permission and conflicting the annual system pack package manager. It's recommended to use virtual environment instead. Okay. Use virtual environment. Okay. Um, how do I use virtual environment? You are using pip version this. Okay. Okay, it's just a warning. So um we are we are not we, we are not really running it as a root user. I, I, I don't think we're running it as a root user. It's a thing I can also check. Uh, but it's just trying to tell us like let's not run as a root user. That's what it's trying to tell us here because it might result in broken permissions and conflicts. So you know, um the user the the the, the user, the user you use in, in creating a particular file or um installing a particular package probably is going to be the, the user the owner of those um of those files of those directory i guess that's what it's trying to that's why it's just trying to to um advise like don't run as a root user so just run as a less privileged user that any user can easily access it so that's the one we have here but then um it didn't really crash just like i said honestly red is always scary me i don't like seeing red <laughs> so but then it's entered. So it's not an error anyway. So then okay, so okay. Sorry, um Mr. Bolo. Yeah, me too. Yes, I just want to chip this in. So I I was working with someone on something, and usually um um it, so talking about virtual environment. That's okay. just what I want to address. Most sometimes you could have um Python installation on your system. For yeah. certain reasons, you are running some things, you are doing that naturally. Yes. If you there are certain packages that you can install. Um, if you don't create a virtual environment and run that separately, that could cause like a kind of conflict, conflict. With what you already have on your system. So usually for people that are conversant to writing Python codes, you want to build your application in probably a virtual environment so that everything that you need to would be a kind of isolation. But then the reason why I'm saying this is my friend now told me that, well, running Docker on its own is like you're having an isolated environment. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're like having an isolated environment. So you really shouldn't really bother so much about um, those kind of conflict because everything you are doing Putting the thing is already isolated from your local system originally. So I think we jo can just ignore that error and just move exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you know, um, when I saw virtual environments, I remember it's it's a a, a a Python thing, you know, it's something I've done, but you meant to just mention it and I just understand the concept of uh, the virtual the virtual environment very well now you know I was I was trying to recollect like why 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 but I don't really want to think much about it that's why I didn't really bother anyway but thank you for for really uh, bringing that up yeah. thank you yeah, I appreciate so I'm um, just like as, as explained you know Docker is already being isolated so you don't really have to virtual environment is just a way like okay you're working on application so this application you want to install all its dependencies. Okay, but, but maybe it is, um, you're a programmer, you have a single laptop, okay, and then um, there's an app you are working, maybe it's using Python 2, you have another app, it's using Python 3, then you have another one, if you use Python 3.7, in fact, there's a major change between Python 3.6 and 3.6, I think I had that issues back then, I had that issue back then, you know, so now, instead of you now worry like, oh, when you want to write this person A application that is written in Python 2, let me only stop Python 2 and do Python 3, you know, or um, only stop Python 3 for Python 3.6 or Python. So instead of that, you just have virtual environment, you just activate virtual environment for that application or for the environment you be needing. So you can just name your virtual environment maybe based on the app you're working with. So the virtual environment, you just kind of activate it. So everything you're going to be doing view is it will just isolate everything for that hub or everything you have been at that moment to that particular environment that it's activated so that's what this is just talking about so this is just python you know that's why it's always good when you have programming experience devops will be good for you but it's not a must 
these are things you can just easily read online. You know, if you don't know it, you can easily read it online. So you don't get scared. If you have a development experience, I know this because I was once a developer, but there are a lot of DevOps engineers that don't even know about this. Okay, so that's that. So now let's see what we have. Let's see the local images we have. Now, this is the dev class that we've built. So uh, with this dev class now, let's just run. We already know how to run our Docker, our Docker image. So let's try to run it. Docker run. Uh, let's run this in the detached mode. Okay. And let's apply ports. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's assign ports. So let's run port 80. Let's map port it to port five five thousand on on the container. Okay, then um, let's name it. Okay, DevOps. Then what's the image name? Dev class. Docker run L for example. Okay. So now, uh, just like I said, you must also learn to know how to read all these things. So now look at it, the container name DevOps is already in use. So that's just the problem. So you have to remove or rename that container to be able to reuse that name. So once you see things like this, just try as much as possible to know how to read all these messages. Most of the time it's going to give you a hint of what to do. So let's just rename the, the name of the container. Let's name it DevOps2. Oh, so there's another one as DevOps too. <laughs> Docker TS I mean, hey. Oh, okay. So this is it. So um, I can even remove the Docker prune. Docker container. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So. I think um, it's removed. You should, so I should have removed them. DevOps, DevOps 2. Okay, because DevOps 2 is still up and running. So I can just Docker RM, I think F. That's the first stop, DevOps 2. All right, so. All right, we have this cool more running. So let me run. The Docker run, Docker run DevOps. All right, so let's see what we have. Docker um, PS. Okay, good. So it's up and running. How many minutes? Up 17 seconds ago. So now, we can call on localhost 30. So let's see what we have on localhost 80 rather. Hello, can anyone hear me? Hello. My internet. My internet is messing me up today. Hello, can anyone hear me? Yes, I can hear yes. you. All right. I don't know why, why my internet is messing me up today. Okay, so local flask. Okay, so now let's see. So we have we have our container running, which is on port 80. So now let's call localhost to see localhost on port 80. So by default, it's always port 80. So yeah, we have it running. So 
let me get my machine ID. I think config. Call if config dot me. All right, so yes, my machine ID. So you can also try it from your end and see. Let's see what we have. Let me show my machine ID. Let's see how we have this done. All right, so you see, just by issuing, just by issuing two commands, everything is up and running. So that's the beauty of of having containers. So as a developer or even as a developer, it just is. It, they actually call it packaging too. You know, it's a way for packaging your application. Just like when you buy a food, you package everything so that you can easily take it. It's the same thing as your Docker. You use it to package your app. Okay, so if you're packaging your app, you just deliver the Docker file, you know, like the your client, you literally just have to run this Docker build and Docker run. Boom, everything is up and running. So you actually see the magic. So here's the magic now. And um, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Okay. Do you have any question before we continue? Okay, so it's just a little question about what you asked. I saw you you wrote call ipconfig.me. Can you explain that command line? Um actually, this is what I know. I actually know this command right from onset anyway. Like it is to help me um get my high page. Um uh, normally this is what you have. IF config, if you run your IF config, it's going to show. This is your networking tool. So now um, with the ifconfig.me, let me see. I I it is the command I actually do right from one set myself. I, I, I don't really have a explanation for that. Oh, but I know oh, okay. just run your let ifconfig does me, you get your machine IP. Let me let me rephrase that IP. The pop Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, okay, so, so that public IP that was returned, 35.78.204.something, yeah. something, is that your own, the, I, the public IP yeah. of your system of the on the internet? Yeah, the, the public IP of the machine. It returns the public Which IP. One? My EC2 instance. Yes, that's oh, my your EC2 instance. Okay, okay. Everything you're doing here is from an EC2 instance on AWS, right? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. I, I think I understand now. Thank yeah, you. so it, it, it just returns my, um, the public IP for my EC2 instance. Normally, I, sh I think I should see the public IP here. So these are the, the, the network interface present. When you run your IF config, you see all the network interface you have. So we have Docker, we have Docker with one. Uh, there we have ETH here. Uh, this is the private, here is the public. Then we have It's not even listed here anyway, but it's one we are just using get my public IP. So I've no, I've known this command for, for a while. You know, it's it's something I'm always struggling to get my public IP at times. So that's just what I easily use. <laughs> I don't know. Is, does anybody have an idea how to get your public IP? Aside from that. Hello. <sighs> Can anyone hear me? What's your I question? I can hear sir? you. Is it not IP config? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying IP config now. So I think I have to install IP config first. I think there's IP config. Let me see. Um, app get. App get install. Yeah. IP config, config is a Windows command. Windows. It's a Windows. It's a window. Why I have configs for Linux? It's for Linux. Okay. okay. They, are doing, they are doing this. They are doing the same thing. All right. <clears throat> Let me see for my Windows if it's going to show my IP. 
Because I, I think Windows normally shows shows the IP. Yeah, I, I think I've used it before. IP config. I have it. It will return all the um, network interfaces on on, yeah. on your on your local system. It doesn't even show. Um, doesn't give me my 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 um SP IP. Doesn't. So these are just the private IPs assigned. Okay. So now uh, we 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 have. Let's just continue. Let's continue. So. Uh, apps get installed. IP config should work. I think I've used it. Apps get installed. IP config. I used it. Sync. I need to locate package up here. I think it doesn't exist. Okay, yeah, cool. Let's just, just let's continue. So um, now we have our Docker image. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to push this Docker um, image to uh, my Docker hub. So now for me to push my Docker image to Docker hub now, I have to specify, let's assume I have my on-prem registry, which is Nexus. With my Nexus, I can have, um, I can have my, uh, my DNS, which is not Docker, okay? How do I specify, okay, do I want to put it to my public registry or my private registry? Now, if I run this now, if I run Docker, if I run Docker push, if I run Docker push, um, what is the image? The image is dev class. Let's see what is going to happen. Docker push, it's as, just the same way you run git push, right? Remember your Git push the same way you use your Docker push as well. So let's do Docker push. Let's see what's going to say. Let's see the problem. Problem statement here. All right. Look at what is happening. It says the push refers to repository Docker library dev class, which is where the official image are being pushed. And look at it. They said access to resource is denied. Why? Because I don't have access to it. Okay. So now I have to tell it like guy. Push it to my own registry, which is docker docker.io slash bulexi slash dev class. Okay, so for me to for me to do that, for me to do that, I have to retag the image and change the image name from dev class to uh bulexi slash dev class. Okay, so it's as simple as just running docker tag. So I have to retag. Okay, so like, um, and let's assume I actually want to use any other registry, maybe your own personal registry, your private registry, or another one different from Docker. Or then you just put the URL, you tag it with the URL, the URL um, of the registry you want to make use of. Okay, so in our in our case now, let's let's start. Let me get the URL. Uh, What's what's my URL? I'm trying to get my URL so that I can tag it based on my URL. Sign in. Yeah. Trying to sign it so that I can get my okay. So now um So now, okay, this is me. So I just have to retag something like this, just follow this format. So let, let me retag now. For me to retag, I just say docker tag. So I want to tag dev class. Okay, I want to retag dev class. Then what do I want to retag it to, which is Bulexi? slash dev class so because now i want it to come here i want it this this first part is actually my registry username okay and then slash dev class what what is going to name um the artifact itself is dev class 
then you can now put version. I can call it version 1.1, V1.1. So now if you want to specify version, you just put semicolon here. This is the semicolon version 1.1. Okay, so or version 1.2, you can just and then my just my just leave it. If you not put anything as version, it's going to name it as latest, which is what we have here. If you look at this now, okay, this is tag name. So instead of tag name, so you just put it as latest, it's going to be latest. Now, let me not put any version, it's going to name it as latest. Now, let me push now. Docker push. That's what we have. Lexi. All right, so um, access denied. Okay, so we still have access denied there. I think I have to do log local login now. So I have to log in on my um, terminal first. I have to log in. So let me hold on. Let me try and do something. I actually want to be sure if I'm doing the right thing. Let me do Docker pull, pull this, and see what is going to happen. Oh, is it a a I actually want to try to pull that image and see what we have. But I, I, I want to prepare the bullet, the, the docker.io. I want to see if it's going to work. Docker.io slash Lexi. Let me see if it's going to pull. I just want to be sure if this URL is correct. The image is up to date. Okay, so fine. That actually shows it's correct. So now um, it's telling me permission denied. The credit access to the research is denied. So what I have to do now is if you have things like this, you might want to run your Docker login. Just like you, you remember, you run your Git login the last time. So the same thing to as Docker. So they almost have they almost have those in common. So Docker login. So it's going to ask for my username. What's my username? My username is Belexi. And then my password. All right, so now I'm logging success. Let me try to pull without, let me try to push without um, my registry name and see what error we have. Okay, I still have access denied. So let me push with my um, registry. All right, so it's working. Okay, so um, I have a question here. Okay, I can hear you. Sometimes your organization is not actually using Docker Hub for exactly it might be ECR or uh, any other cloud platform registry. Okay. At this point, if I want to push to probably another cloud platform registry, what do I do? Is it that that login is going to be a login to that other cloud platform or or what? Um. Yeah. Um. There is there is um a directory. That's own directory where your your Docker login is. So you can just specify your username and password there. That's Docker uh, home directory. So you can just put your secret username and password there. That's where it's always getting um, your credentials from. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So um, now, if you do Docker push, it's going to. Hello. Hello. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I don't know why my internet is messing up. So now we have other um, based on your question, sir. So um, we have to uh, we have we have um, I, I know of two other options. 
you can specify it as an environment variable. Okay, so um, in case an environment variable will not work for you, there's also a Docker um, red, um, Docker config file. Let me see if, if I can find it. There's a Docker config file. Start session. So you can either use, use your environment variable anyway. So, um, and if you don't want to use your environment variable, you can also use the Docker config file. We can check it together. Okay, you can log in to register, log in to hub and private registry. Okay, let's see. So, use the car login, come back to the registration and let's get to server. Okay, so log in to task, log in to the car. Okay, um, access to king succeeded. interactive login okay so um, we also have non-interactive login this another method okay now this is the question that um adme asked us um okay this is one way to do that docker login docker login registry this is the private registry i look can you hear me yes yes yeah. absolutely this is gone all right, yeah. So um, they specify the registry name. So um, the question DMA actually asks is, now, if you just do Docker login, it automatically assumes it's pushing it to docker.io, okay? But in our case now, let's assume we have our own Docker hub. Uh, maybe later on, um, I can, I, I will show you how to have, how to create your own registry. Maybe we can, we can practice with Nexus, or let's assume you're working with ECR, you're working with um, AWS, um, container registry. Okay, so you 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 um ah, that's the container registry, Elastic Cloud Registry. Okay, let's assume you're working with ECR, that's Elastic Cloud Registry. It's going to have um its own address. Okay, so that's what you're going to replace here. You're working with maybe GCR, that's Google um cloud registry. Okay, so now that it's going to have its own address, that's what um this is all about. So it's going to ask. Docker login, then the URL, then the user, uh, most people that's going to ask for the username and password, okay? So another way you can do that is, this is what I was saying. So you can also go to, this is the file I'm saying, you can also configure a file, which is located in the home directory. So let's locate the file. Um, sometimes you might want to manually log in to register by adding an existing authentication token to a Docker config. This can be used in CI environment, yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically, you know, if 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 you're if you're configuring a CI, definitely you don't want to follow this method because this method now with this method, uh, you might you will be exposing your um, your secrets because another challenge you'll be having is how do you supply your password? Okay. So uh, try to solve a problem. You you run into another problem. So he said you can add auth token yourself by adding um, the token into this particular file. Okay, so let's let's see the file. I think the file is normally found in um root direct um in the home directory. Let me see. Uh, you can use all yours by yourself. Um, okay, is it like I have to create this file manually? Hold on, let me just see. Okay, um, ls. Boom. Let me check inside Ubuntu and see what we have. Let's type in LAT. Uh, boom. Ubuntu. Okay, so I can't see that. So, okay, let me do this. Let me find. Let me find from home and see if I can see the file. Find, find by name. I think it's a single by name. Um, what was it called? Let's talk
Okay, so I think this is the file we are looking for. So let me just cancel since I got the file. So let's see what we have inside inside that. All right, so this is the conflict of JSON. You know, so I tried to take I want to open that now anyway. My 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 Docker hub, my Docker of credential should be there. <laughs> so let me know open that. So um now another challenge you might have is how do you actually create this? So the other challenge is how do you create this? So um I, I need to figure out you can add the Docker of token by using okay. So now how do I get the token? How do I get the token? So now um, let's assume you have your own private registry. I don't know how to generate the token on AWS anyway. So it's going to automatically, if, if, if you get your token, if you, if you have your token, so you, you just try to update this file. So updating this file, you're going to have uh, the URL here and then the, uh, the hot token. You just supply it here and once you actually try to push, it's going to push to this, uh, it's going to use this particular configuration that you have here. Does, does that make sense? Oh yeah, it does make sense. Um, what about the other person? Okay, let me try to define the problem. So now the problem, the problem, the problem we had was, Docker, you know, when people are talking about when people are talking about images, when you're talking about container images, in fact, people always talk about Docker. <laughs> so in fact, they are like, Docker, 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 Docker is just um uh how should I put it? Docker is also a tool. There are, we, we have others, we have other tools that you can use for containerization, but in our case now we are using Docker. Okay, and once you are doing Docker, once you do Docker push, it's going to assume is Docker.io. But there are some, but there are some times, but there are some times you don't really want to push to Docker.io. Okay, probably you have your own private registry, which is you have ECR. There's there's another registry. If you know how to use Docker, you can also use ECR. That's inside your AWS. That's for keeping your um, ECR AWS. That's AWS registry. Elastic Container Registry, so I was even right there. So Elastic Container Registry, okay, that's ECR. Uh, we have we have we have GCR too. Okay, GCR too, that's Google. Google has its own, so I'm sure Azure too has its own. So now, if you work with this ECR, it's going to uh, the private registry, okay. And when you run Docker Docker push, then the name of the image alone. Automatically, which is what we have here, it's going to have you. It's going to assume you are trying to push. Look at it now, okay? Look at it. I, all I ran here was Docker push. Then the name of the image I was trying to push to the Docker registry. And look at it. It automatically assumes and push it to docker.io slash library slash dev class. Do you get it? It automatically assume. So let's now assume a scenario where you have a different registry, which is not docker.io. You know, um, in that scenario, if you want to do docker login, so you just do docker login, the, the registry name, let's assume the registry, uh, maybe let's assume we are using Nexus, we have our Nexus. So Nexus is another kind of um, registry, Nexus um, registry. You can use Nexus as your registry. Let me just see what this next was. So, uh, what does Nexus do? <laughs> okay. Nexus, Nexus, uh, um, should I put it in DevOps? Okay, software. All right. Nexus software. Okay. Nexus repository. Okay. It's an, uh, it's an open source repository that supports many artifact formats, including Docker, Java, and NPM. You know, during during the course of this um, 
class classes we should we, we, we can play with Nexus set up our own registry you know I'll, I'll show you it's going to be easy with Kubernetes anyway but let's not delve into that now so now once you install that it's going to give you a URL that you can use and your URL can be in the format of this IP that we used can be in format of this IP that we deployed you know because we are we are deploying it on this our same EC2 instance so it's going to give you you are going to have an address which in our case now is going to be an IP because it not have DNS yet so now um, if you want to do that let's assume we, we, we self hosting our um, registry you just do your docker your docker push uh, your docker login your docker login then the URL which is this and then if it actually finds any um if it, if 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 it's able to resolve the address it's going to ask you for login credentials but yeah nice it's not going to ask for login credentials which you see an issue like probably maybe it's not a registry so let's just see it it, it should be done an error like it's not a registry so now um okay, it's asking me for username <laughs> registry that doesn't exist okay all right he said connection refused it's, it, it couldn't find anything you know so that's that's the problem statement now let's assume you have your private registry how do you log in so you just specify the address and then you also have the file that you can configure which is what we try to locate here and here's the file so now um you actually get this express i don't know about this anyway i just have an idea like there's a config file then i have to use um, our find to locate the file and then i discover the file is located here and then um, i was able to find this config.json if i should open this now it, it should contain my authentication token but i won't be doing that now so um uh, that's that's it. So now let's go back to my Docker Hub. You know, we've pushed. Let's go back to the Docker Hub and see what we have. Can we push? Apparently. Class. What's up? Sorry, I'm in here. Okay. Did we push yet? Okay. Let me try to push. Probably, I think we didn't push. Docker, Docker, let's see Docker images. Oh, why? Why is it taking time? Okay, so this is the dev class. So now let's do Docker push. Docker push dev class. You know, um, remember I told you about tag. Because we didn't really tag, because we didn't really tag, it automatically assigned tag as latest. Okay, so automatically using tag as the test. I, I think it's a relatively large file. It's still pushing it on. Yes, that's 528. So um, some people will be scared, like, oh, is this using my data? I don't think it's using your data. All it's actually taking is this. 
You're only issuing command to AWS. So it's actually using AWS data, not your data. <laughs> So, sorry, in relation to what you said right now, are you trying to tell us that this 528 MB is not going to be equivalent of the data that will be deducted from the no, no, subscription? No, 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 no. no. All, all you did here was you really sent this command to your EC2 instance. All the networking parts, all the data, everything is on AWS. That's, that's, the, that's the concept of cloud anyway. So all you did was, okay, all it's going to take from your data is just you issue this command, Nigerian factor. <laughs> like, I mean, the, the, data, the data needed to just issue this command into your machine. A lot right. of people could not do this class because of data, you know, ah, I don't have money for data, I don't know, you know, Nigeria. <laughs> because in Nigeria, you're already handicapped already. Thanks, Chris. But, but the truth about it is anybody missing this class is missing a lot. It depends on what you want. I said that if you're ready. <laughs> but the thing is, um, I learned that um, there is a way to fast track this process once we want to do it again. I don't know, maybe I'm right, yeah. That um, this amount of data that is being sent to um docker hub we want to redo it um the amount of time is going to take is going to be lesser in as much as um okay. no, no. i actually get your i actually get your your question now now i'm sure um if you retard the same image now if you retard the same image maybe with a new version i will try to push okay it's going to be faster why because it's going to be using catch it's going to be using, okay, look, look at what really happened here now. I think for year now, I think it didn't really do anything. Um, dev class, okay, said Leah already exists. So why do we have Leah already exists? Okay. Um, I, 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 I. I really don't understand this part anyway, but there are some, there are some, there are some times where that when you're doing something, it's going to use it from catch, like the layer already exists in the registry you are pushing to. Don't worry, we'll try and make a change and and we push and see what we are going to have. Okay. So now it's not going to take this time anymore. It's not going to take this long anymore because it already has a layer. So it's just going to push that particular change that we made, that's what it's going to push. It's not going to take that long again. We retag and see, we retag and see, and also make a change and see what happened. Okay, so while we wait for this to come here, I just have a question that it's uh, okay. futuristic. So please bear with me. That's now, right. in the real DevOps world, I just want to make it more tangible. What happens now that our image is in the registry? What happens after? In the real life scenario, anybody, are... you um, now I have the image on my local machine. You know, let's assume you are my clients. Let's assume you are my clients now. I can easily just do the image and put it to my register. Anybody can pull it, just like I see your engine X. You know, um, any this same image like this, anybody can pull it in as much as you have access. So you can just use it and you know use it. Um, you, you, you can reference it inside your Kubernetes. You can reference it inside your um, Docker Compose. You know, definitely. Let's assume I have this image running on my instance now. Okay, and then um, I actually want to deploy uh, a Kubernetes um, um, a Kubernetes objects. You know, probably maybe. A deployment, how to make a deployment in Kubernetes. I have to specify the image. So how do I reference this image? I have to keep it somewhere. Do you get just like you are cloning your, your code from your GitHub now? Let's assume you don't have it on GitHub. Um, and then you, you wrote your code on, on, on PC or uh, uh, maybe on your PC at, at home, then you go to the office. You really want to get a copy of that code. You just, you just have to do this. You don't have to carry flash all around. Just git clone or git pull 
and then you continue from where you stop that tone. The same thing here. Anywhere you want to use your image, uh, you just reference it. You are going to work with Kubernetes, so you see how we are going to be using this image. Does that answer it? Yes, it answers it. I was actually looking for you talking about the DevOps tools that can now be plugged into the registry to further work. Uh, you just mentioned Kubernetes, which is fantastic. Okay. All right. So he said push now. Let's go to the registry. Let's see what we have. Let's refresh. Um, sorry. System violence. All right. So here we go. So now I can, you, you, it's public. You can, from your head, you can just do docker pull and then you can definitely pull this image now, okay? So um, that's how it works. And you can always reference it any other place you'll be needing it. And then um, now let's try to be tag. Let's assume I want to tag the same way we tag. Let's try to be tag now and push and see what we have. Docker tag, docker tag dev dev class then we have lexi let's assume um I'm, I'm using my my machine too so it's better you put um my machine ip let's assume the registry is on my machine you can also put it as your ip so it just it will just be your ip Oops. it will just be your ip then the name but i don't have the registry Okay, so that's how to push. Or if in case you have another private registry, just specify the private registry there and then the name of the image. Okay, but, but here we are tagging to, um, since you are using Docker, it automatically um, append it. And then I can also specify the full part anyway if I want. It still works fine. But then the difference now is more to tag. So let's tag it version 1.1.1. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yeah, let's tag. All right, tag. Then we can now push again. Let me try to push. All right, so you see, it doesn't really take time. You see, already exists. Already exists, already exists, already exists, already exists. Okay, so that's what I was talking about. If I should go to Docker Hub now, um, let's refresh. Okay, and let's click on this. Okay, so see the tag now. So this way you see the tags. So you can also see all other tags. Okay, so. Um, I also wanted to demo something, but the way it is now, I sure it's not like um, you go ahead and just and just read about it. We also have a concept of Docker network. So now, Docker network, Docker network. So with Docker network, um, it happens in such a scenario like two containers. Two containers cannot really um, interact with one with one another. Okay, so how do you make them interact with one another? Like we have a container running. So yes. We have a container running, which is um okay. So let's do something now. I'm going to uh I'm going to deploy this. This container again on another, this image again on another container with the different ports. Okay, so now um, let's see. This is running on port 80. Let me deploy the, the container again. Docker, Docker run, Docker run, uh, Docker run, uh, dashed mode, then ports. Let me give it ports. It's it's um, it's it's one 
Make it like a map to plus 5,000. Then let me give its name. Name DevOps2. Okay, so um, then the image is DevOps class. Okay, so now. Oops. What's the image name? Oh, Dev class. Sorry. Docker run. Oh, DevOps 2. DevOps 2. I believe we will not understand this command now. Right? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I believe we, we, you understand this command. I can only speak for myself. So this is Docker run. We, we, we all know what Docker run is. And I think D actually means in detached mode. Normally, if you run Docker, it's going to keep running. You have to exit. And the moment you exit, it's going to stop the container. But now I'm telling it like detached mode. OK, so return me back to this container. Okay, and I think P is for specifying ports. So I just brought the two of them together. That's why you have DP. Okay, so this is the port. I'm mapping port 5000 to 801 on the host machine. And then the name of the container, I'm naming it DevOps2. And then use, it, use this image dev class. So um, that's what our command is. I, I think. If you, we, we talked about this extensively in our first Devo, um, Docker class. I guess it's because we didn't actually went back to it. Hello. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. I'll, I'll just try to push this to, to, to YouTube. So please, you can just go back to the previous class, try to study the previous class. Okay. And then so, check so now, my question is can you now open this application can you browse the application on your local system using of course. 801 of course yeah coil right. can you do that yeah coil local host port 801 yeah this is the app so um, i can also browse it too Yeah, this is it. So you actually see the, the concept of Docker now. So now, now what I want to explain is I actually want to explain the concept of Docker networking. We also have some concepts in Docker anyway. We also have some concepts in Docker. Um, let me type it out. One concept is volume. We have the concept of volume. So the concept of volume is a way of assisting data. Okay, and then we also have concept of networking. Okay, and then we also have another concept of environment. So um, I may not really talk about this extent. I may not really talk about this extensively because I I I, I not really want to you know uh, bore us. But it's good if you if you know it. It's good if you know it because there are sometimes you definitely need it. Let me just explain it so that you know what you can do. Okay, in case a problem arises, you should know how to go about it. They are very simple anyway. So the first one is volume. So the, the concept of volume is they call it, it is for persistent volume. Okay, so when you're talking about persistent volume, imagine you are running um, a database inside the Docker, a database of your company. You know, like you are employed in the company, um, then you have a database of all the customers running in the Docker, and then you have an issue like you have to delete the Docker and restart. The way to delete the Docker, you know, all your data is already deleted. You know, right? Or uh, maybe you've done some transaction, you have some cookies, you have a lot of things stored inside your Docker container, and then you stop the container and then you sky be seen. <laughs> you don't lose all your customer data. Okay. So Wait, now, to everything. Everything is gone, of course. Jesus. So that's what Docker volume has come to help you do. So now, instead of you 
If you now do Docker, if you do Docker remove now, all the containers are removed. But the, the concept of Docker volume is that it's going to map, you can map a particular directory. Okay, you can map a particular directory to a directory on your host machine. Are you getting it? It's just like a way of mapping. Um, yeah, um, we can work with it now. We can work with it. Though I, I do really practice that. I do really practice that, but we can just go through it together anyway. So um, I will show you, we will browse it and we'll see how it goes. Then um, that's for volume anyway. For volume is the way for persisting data. And how does it work? Let me just explain how it works. So it works in such a way like, you know, um, Okay, there's something we didn't really discuss about. Now, look at this, Docker PS. Let me explain something that I've not explained for a while. So now look at this now. We have this container running. How can you log into this container? Do you know I can log into this container just like I run into my machine? This is my machine. Inside this machine, I can still log into this container. Okay, so how do I do that? I do that by just running uh, Docker. This is the command for do that. Exec. So you call it Docker exec. Okay. So Docker exec. Now, um, another thing you 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 want to specify now is interactive mode. You want to be working with it interactive. So Docker exec. I think it. Okay. So uh, I think it. Then the name of the container, which is DevOps. Okay. Uh, so Geo. And then um, the terminal you want to make use of, which is in our case, we want to make use of bin bash. Let's let's see if it exists. So bin bash. At times it's bin bash, at times it's sh. Okay. So let's see. All right. So you remember this? See this? You see the moment I logged in, see where it brought me to. The work DIR that was specified inside the work, the work there that was specified inside the Docker file. See, so let, let me run ls inside inside now and see what we have. All right, so you see the same copy, all the copy command that we had. You know, we told you to copy this file, copy everything, which is what we have here. So when you look at it, that is what we have. So you see, you see, you see the Docker file. You see the Docker AWS JSON, you see API hub, requirement.txt, and then you see templates. Okay, so that's that. So now we cannot do it in such a way like the concept of volume now is let's assume we made a change here now. Okay, um, which library does Python use that I can use as an example? Uh, I don't even know any Python library of fund. I don't know any Python library of fund. Okay, let me just make a change here anyway. Let me make a change here requirements dot txt. Okay, so um, oh, requirements. Oh, vi not found. That's another problem now. So you see now, why why is vi not found? Vi is not found because it's not installed. No, does it have apt, apt, um, does it have apt library? Okay, yeah, it, ha it has apt. So now, since it's not installed, there are some containers that it's not going to have. So since it's not installed, I can just, it's easy for me, I can just, because it has uh, this apt repository, so I can just apt, apt get install vi, I can apt get install it. So, you know, somebody asked the question earlier, how do you know the kind of container that you want to uh, make use of? So this is, this, is, this is some of the problems that I might face that might help you to, to determine the kind of container you want to make use of. Not all containers, not all image uh, is having this. Python is actually having apps repository. That's why we are able to use apps. So unable to locate, okay. So now I think the reason why I'm so able to locate is because I need to, Update. I think I need to update first. I need to update the repository. 
So uh, I'm actually happy about this anyway. So this class, I think I can easily, I can, I can, conf I can confidently say it's not about teaching. We are, we are working together. This, this is what they call practical class. I'm not just teaching and I'm not just saying, okay, um, come follow me. We are doing it together. You know, we are seeing the problem and then we are solving the problem. So that's why I'm just happy doing this. So this is actually taking time anyway. It's actually taking time. Can she stop? Okay, so now it's it's been able to update. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to install this Vim. So after update, let me see if it's going to see the package. You know, before it was said it was not able to locate. So let me see if it's going to locate it now. Okay, yes. So now I'm installing the Vim. Just like I told you, not all containers can do this. So one day, maybe you just build a container. Ah, I tried to have this, it's not working. Not all container. And you cannot be using. Uh, maybe you are using an OS, you know, or a a a, a um a, a container that actually has a repository, maybe a young repository, and then you are trying to do out. Uh, we are trying to do apps. You know, there are some maybe RPM. You can also do RPM. There's RPM. I know RPM. Uh, that's right, that package manager. Um, I know Hart. I know Yum. You know, those are um repositories where you can really get. Your packages from okay so now we are done let me try to use the vim now and see all right so now i'm able to edit now so um instead of doing that again do you know i can also specify that command inside my docker file instead of having to be doing this manually i can just specify it inside my docker file as well so just the next one let me just say Django. Okay, I try. So now, okay, now you see what I've happened now. I've actually made a change. If I should delete this container now, those changes are gone. So you see the problem. Now, the concept of volume now is this directory, as you, as you are making changes inside this container, okay, this particular file map it to my container. How do you exit this container anyway? Just exit. It exit, you can easily exit the container. You see it as you turn me back to see me, okay? So I can easily tell it like, map this particular directory to a directory on my host machine. That is what the concept of volume. And it's, it's, it's a way for, it's a way of, uh, it's a way of assisting data, okay? It's a, it's just a, it's, it's, it's a simple, um, it's a simple uh, option that I just specify. I think I think I think V. But well, let me just confirm. Volume, volume map, Docker run. So maybe just put um, I think I think V for that. I don't know if you understand the the problem statement here. Hello. Hello. Oh, which I can hear you. I can hear you. Please, do you understand the problem statement here? Yes. <clears throat> um, I actually <laughs> that's why I, I really don't really want to uh, mention this right now because I think a lot of people might struggle with it. So I'm just trying to to avoid most of these problems, you know, but 
let's not really go deep deep uh, deep into it. Let's not really go deep into it today anyway. So um, let's give let's give ourselves opportunity to just practice first. You know, if you practice first, um, trying to learn all these things as a layer is going to be really helpful. Let's just continue. So we have. Um, I actually want to explain three concepts to us. The first one is Docker volume. We have Docker volume. The next one is Docker network. So we've we've, we've been able to on that um to drive in the concept of Docker volume. Docker volume is just a way for solving a problem. You know, you don't want to be careless and just delete your company data. And that's it. You don't want to do that. Okay, that's why you have Docker volume. It's a way for persisting data. So besides Docker volume, you also have you also have um, Docker network. So when you're working with Docker network, when you're working with Docker network, uh, let me quickly demo that. Let me demo that. So with Docker network, let's log into a container. Let's log into a container. Let's Docker exec into a container and see. So this is DevOps. This is DevOps, okay? Uh, okay, but before we log in, let's do Docker PS. Let me show you something, Docker PS. So we have Docker PS. One is um, DevOps is running on port 80. The other one is running on port 801. Okay, so let, let's exec into DevOps. Now, now um, let's try to point this from um how can i do i think okay let's call it this this should work let's see um coin okay fine coin is working okay so um let's call this on potato one let's see what we have all right so you see it's working right now let's now do coin let's do coin um look out on port two one Okay, so you see connection refused, right? But let's do coin, let's do coin 80. Connection refused, why? Because the app itself is running on port 5,000, if you remember. That's why we are exposing this port 5,000. We are inside the container, okay? So in that case, that should be coin local host 5,000. So some people now, Probably you are scared, like, oh, why is it 5,000? The developer or the stack you are using, we actually determine by, I think by default, Django runs on port 5,000. Then I, I Flask run on port 5,000. Okay, you can change it anyway. So you have, if you want to change it, you read about Flask. By default, Django runs on port 8080, that's on Python. I think Angular 2 runs on maybe port 5,000, I think, but I'm not sure. So all these, um, all these um all these frameworks are a port where, where the work uh, they run on. So now this this is flat, it's running on port 5000. That's why we are supposed port 5000. And because we are inside the container, that's why we are using port 5000. Okay, so now um now let's do something now. Do you know we have two containers? We have DevOps and DevOps, um, we have DevOps. And then we have DevOps 2. Do you know from DevOps 2, you should be able to reference that container, which is uh, from DevOps 1, go to reference DevOps 2. Okay, so how do we reference it? We should be able to, um, there's something they call, is it container name, container, um, resolving of container names. Okay, that's uh, container name resolution. So now uh, we should be able to, if I thought our network was properly configured, we should be able to do coin DevOps, um, coin DevOps, DevOps, DevOps 2. Then um, which port is it going to be here? Is it, is, is, is it supposed to be port? Is it going to supposed to be port, um, port 801? Port 801 that we expose it to. But now I said could not resolve the host called DevOps 2. So now let's assume we actually did network now. We bring network, 
what we need, the, the concept of network is we can run two containers and tell it it belongs to the same network. Let's see. There's something we call inside Docker, we call Docker Network. There's something we call Docker Network. Oh, I have to resist this. I have to resist this. So let's do Docker Network. Why is this slow? We are no strapping of many. I'm just trying to explain this concept to you. You might definitely not need it for now, okay? Because um, now, if if you're if if you're if you're working with Docker, okay, and you're working for a big company, you know, you might need this concept. But then, Kubernetes has has, has also helped you solve this problem. We are going to talk about Kubernetes too, okay? But I'm just trying to explain this. So in case you are, ah, this is becoming hard. It's not becoming hard, you know? It's just good when you know it. This is a level, you can't do it over, over, overnight. The more you practice, the more you get to know it. I'm just trying to explain the concept of Docker Network now, okay? So Docker Network, so let's do Docker Network LS. That's what we have. So now it's telling us we have host. We have bridge and then we have node. So um, I think we can also create Docker network. So to create Docker network, you can say Docker create. Um, is it network create or create network? <laughs> Docker, Docker network, okay. I think it should be Docker network. Docker network creates. Okay, let's call it test. All right, so let's run Docker network ls. We should see um, test. So yeah, so you see it has created a bridge called um, ls. So now, if I want the two containers to be able to communicate, I will just specify the network name. Now, let's create a few other. Let's create a few other network. Let's create a few other network and see what we have. Uh, we run Docker, Docker run. So we have Docker run. Let's call it DevOps three. Okay, and then to specify network, you just say net test. So um, net. Yeah, are telling the network test. So the Docker 3 actually belongs to this net called test. Oh, sorry. Said so it's already in use. Let's use port 803. Mm -hmm. DevOps 3. Let me just use DevOps 4 without wasting time. DevOps 4. Let us wrap this up. Sub. All right, so let's create another one called DevOps 5 and map it on 2803. Are those containers DevOps 4, DevOps 5? Yes. Yeah, containers I'm just creating name DevOps 5. I'm giving it a name like, see now, Docker PS. Docker PS, DevOps. Um, the first one is okay. So let's continue on a new page. I just let me see. Okay, so um, look at it now. So I, I'm just naming it DevOps 4, DevOps 5, so you can see. So now let me exec into DevOps 4 and run code from DevOps 4. You know, the other time it says it was not able to resolve. Let's see if we still have that same problem now. Oh, did I remember to, to put network? Um, so let me say DevOps 4. 
If I try to call DevOps 5 now, let's see. Fail to connect. So now you see the, the error message has, is different now, right? Why? Because, okay, let me do call DevOps. Let me do call DevOps 2. Call, call DevOps 2. All right, so you see the, 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 the message are different. This one is could not resolve DevOps 2, but this one is connection refused. Okay, now um, let me change that DevOps 5. Let me give it a port. It's running on port 802. That's DevOps 5, okay? DevOps 5 is running on port 803, okay? Let's see. Okay, see, okay I think maybe it's the container ports. All right, so you see now, it's able to resolve. I don't know if you can. So now, but what's the essence of this? There are some scenarios where you might have a container running. Maybe you want two containers to communicate with each other, two hubs, or probably, you know, the concept of microservice, you know, um, there's, there's another concept of microservice, you know, you can also use, uh, you know, um, it's, it's just another level of this DevOps anyway, like you want to have two different containers, but from one container, you want to be able to talk to another container, like maybe when you are trying to do your login, okay? Um, login, login is a way of um, login. I don't know how to explain login. Like the activities, monitoring the activities that is happening inside your container, just like you do local logs. Let me see this container now, since you see. There's some Docker logs, Docker logs. You remember the concept of Docker logs? Docker logs is to see uh, see the logs, what is happening inside the particular container. Okay, so now this is the logs inside this container, inside DevOps, this is the logs. So there are sometimes there's a, there's a, there's a login tool. You know, you, your company might have login too, okay? Because you know, I give developer access to be able to check a container. So you can just be creating a login like that. All these logs, people be pushing it to this particular tool. There's another tool, you know, we have Elastic Search as a login tool, Elastic. All these things don't get scared. Um, in Kubernetes, it's just a few configuration and then they are up and running. So that's why I said Docker and Kubernetes, they are the most important thing you need to learn. By the time you run these things, you know, just put your CV, you can install this one, you can install this one, because you already know the basics, okay? So Elastic Search is a login tool. So uh, we can, if you have time, you can also play around that, okay? So this Elastic Search is a login tool. There's, um, there's self-hosted, there's self-hosted, and there's also cloud-hosted anyway. So let's assume you are self-hosting it. Probably you, you have a Docker image for it. You have a Docker image. In fact, there's, a, there's an image for it. I can just, this elastic set, and I can easily install it now. And I'll tell it like, guy, just push to this. I can install it and configure it. It's a thing I can even show us, but let's not do that for now. Probably maybe you can do it next class. I don't know what. Ah, nah. Um, then the, 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 the third concept I want to, to, to talk about is environment. So environment, let's assume in, in a bash script, in a bash script, uh, in a bash script, you have a bash script, you know, a bash script is a, a script, a report automating a process, right? So now inside that bash script, you have a variable that you want to pass into your, into your container. That's what you use this environment for. Okay, so now let's log into this container. Let's log into this container. Let's log into one of the containers we have. There's this command to, to see an environment variable. They call it print env. Print env. You can see all the environment variable. So these are all the environment variable we have. So it says the present working directory, which is the work dir. You see, he said this is this is it. What Python version is running? This is Python version. For those that don't know what variable is, you know, how do I define the variable? Please, do you have anybody that can help us define the variable here? Explain variable.
What is it? Variable is used to store. Yeah, fine. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, now, that's the word. Variable, uh, variable are used to store information to be referenced. Okay? So, uh, it's, a, it's, it, it's like a storage location. If you want to go deep into it, it's like a storage location. Like, you have a compartment. Okay, this compartment, I want you to hold this particular thing. Um, like, you have your pockets. You have your pocket, you have your front pocket, you have your back pocket, you have everything. You know the location. If you want to pick anything, you know where you put your wallet, you know where you put your phone, you know. Those are locations. The same thing um, is variable here. So now you're just giving it a name. So now if you want to reference this Python variable now, this is a variable, you can just reference it. You know, you can reference host name. If you call host name, it's going to show this. Okay. If you if you if you call Python is going to show this. Let me show you echo, echo, um, um, host name. We did this anyway. We did this when we are doing um, intro to command terminal. So you see, um, host name, it just showed this. So those are variables. So now, if you want to pass variables, that is what um, environments are for. You can pass variable to a container. I think it's as simple as just putting E2. Let me see um, how to pass variable to pass variable to Docker, uh, Docker run, Docker container, yeah. Our case now, I think it's I think E. I just I just wanted to be sure. I think E. Okay, yeah, so this is it now. So now let's run another container and just add this and see what we have. You just put I think E. So you see, um, this they are just used to passing the environment I think E, I think E to pass a variable I think E, I think E. So you can do multiple. So now let's just pass a single variable to one of our containers to and see what we have. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, that's it. Is it slow, man? I'm going to spin up a new container and demonstrate the uh, the environment variable. F of six. Okay. okay, so now after after we do with that, let's exit into DevOps six. Trends ENV. So we should see this variable name, Redis. Okay, so you see, this is the variable name, Redis namespace. So it's just a way of passing environment variable into a container, maybe you'll be needing it, okay? So now I just explained these three concepts to you. You have the volume, you have the network, and then you have the environment. So if you, if you really want to go further, you can just try to explore all these concepts, read about, read about them, but it's very important to know, uh, you know, at least how to run, how to build your Docker file to push, which is what I feel we've been able to treat. So this is uh, um, another level, you know, to Docker, to Dockerization, okay? Um, I actually see the class is so silent today, but I'm pretty sure it's because it's not practiced. If we practice, this, this, this are supposed to, it, 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 it definitely looks difficult. Why? Because you've not practiced. But these are simple things. I have to be honest with you. They are simple, but the more you practice, the more you get to understand. So if you just want to look at this thing, please just try and watch the previous videos, try to catch up, and you'll be happy you are doing that. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Do the all these stuff are still kind of blurry or are a bit theoretical, 
But um, once we start getting, um, start practicing, I believe we are still going to get familiar with the old stuff. I'm, I'm familiar with Docker, kind of, but <laughs> I won't lie. <laughs> I've gotten to some advanced stage where, where I, have to, I have to be wondering that, like, like what, what, what happened? <laughs> like, what's going on here? So, and I strongly believe that I will still definitely catch up. Okay. So, let me ask you a okay. quick question, please. Let me ask you a quick question. Since, All right. Since we started Docker, how many times have you practiced? How many hours have you used in practicing? You meant for this particular course, uh, for this particular training, right? No, for Docker. How many hours? For Docker. Practice? Yes, practicing. Um, practice Docker. Well, the accumulated hours, I could have, let me say, let me say four hours, so to speak. Four, four hours. Yeah, um, that's nice anyway. So then I actually feel so bad. I don't really understand this anyway. Like it's kind of, so um, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what could have happened. Okay, can you can you can, can you just state what the problem is or or what you think we could have done better to better make you understand? Because I feel after spending four hours, what we actually did today should not be uh, should not be new. That's how I feel. No, no, no. What I'm trying to say is that I grasp. You know, Docker is kind of don't let me say it's white. I hope you understand. Um, what I'm trying to say in essence is that um, there are some few commands that I'm still getting myself familiar with. That's what I'm trying to let you understand. But I understand.